my name's Dave Lemaitre, and welcome to the video.
wonderful display of a, a draft dog. They are a working dog and they call carts. And they always get a wonderful history of the
uh, foul nature. Good morning, sir. Coming past me now. And so all that we're talking about, we're really talking about our agricultural past, ladies and gentlemen. And basically these tractors are what have fed this country over the last 70 years. The first tractor in the ring, that wonderful standard boards in there, Make no mistake about it, the most important tractor you will see today because these little standard Fordsons, that's this dark green one, this is what fed this country throughout the Second World War. An incredibly important part of the, the whole war story on, on the home front. These things were absolutely critical. Incidentally, those are the tractors that the Land Army girls use. And uh, not a particularly sophisticated little tractor, but made in huge numbers every week of the Second World War, Ford made a thousand of those standard forces, which is an absolutely astonishing statistic. So, great to see that. Next to next coming past me, I'm sure we'll have a great version, and that's Ford's answer to that, uh, the grey menace. Ford's and Major next, just look at that for a restoration, ladies and gentlemen, as right and as wonderful to see that. Alice Chalmers next, good morning my dear, how are you? Nice to see you. Alice Chalmers, of course, we know huge industrial conglomerate in America. Good morning, sir. A burning air. Now, we're really privileged to see that wonderful little orange tractor there. Hand-built and great to see. Four, five thousand next. Lovely to see. Unrestored. Now, this is the property, really. Over. Should be restored. Should be restored. A really genuine 5,000 like that should be left alone. First of our great Burgess, post-war, a very incredibly innovative engineer, he made those. We'll talk about that a bit later. Now we're coming into the 1960s. Massey Ferguson 135 made a banner lane in Coventry. And again, that is a beautifully turned out tractor. 68 in the year, with a loader. Fordson Major next, again, very, very smartly turned out. Just look at this for a display of tractors, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, sir, how are you? Fordson Dexter again, very, very smart. First of all, David Brown's today. David Brown, of course, tremendously important manufacturer of all things
from a visual standpoint, my goodness, they have it by the bucket ball. A wonderful display. We've got a back story of how the uh, Burmese cars have put it into the whole social history of the Alpine country here in Switzerland, that sort of thing. Lots of tiny little farms where they live. They couldn't get the car to the Great to see you guys here because as we keep saying, without you and your support, we don't really have a show. So, you have a bit of a passion for all things desert-wise, and, and sure enough, here's a bike very much military, I suppose.
steam and the whole of the miniature steam story is all about that faithfulness to the to the original and just look at the quality of those as they go around absolutely astonishing from a historical point of view it's amazing to think that the original plans have been used and scaled down so we do actually have a situation with some of these engines where the original is no longer with us, was scrapped, um, and so the only chance we get to see some of these particularly rare engines is in their miniature format. And it is really just quite amazing. Good afternoon, so nice to see you. Uh, some of them with the trailers, with the living van, 
very much authentic, very much to scale. Now you'll hear them talk about a six inch model or a four inch model. Well that refers to the original one foot. So a six inch model is essentially a half scale. And again, as they go round the ring, do just have a look ladies and gentlemen. Quite astonishing some of these um, taking that engineering art to a whole new uh, territory. It is just extraordinary and I, I find them fascinating to see. I find the, the, um, the originals, of course, it goes without saying, absolutely stunning. But some of these uh, miniatures really just astonishing. Actually, most of the miniatures are relatively modern, probably in the last 20 years. Um, but again, that engineer's art, if you like, is very much to the fore. And, uh, well, it is really uh, amazing and astonishing to see the level. In the early 60s, the steam engine, in practical terms, had really more or less come to the end of its life. And sadly, many, many. Uh, sadly, they were just so much iron. But a few very clever, far-sighted people thought, do you know what, we are not going to let that happen. And we get to see absolutely stunning engines with Fowler coming past me, rigged up as a showman's engine. But from a social history point of view, amazing to think people in the villages around here, their first experience of electricity would be the steam engines and fairground uh, engines that came to the villages and set up and then drove a generator. Just look at this one coming past me now, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely amazing taskers. A lovely little engine. We'll find out really because that could just be an inherently very small engine, or it could be uh, from our miniature steam, and we'll find out because there is a crossover. Some of these engines in full size were never that big. Just to add to the, uh, the overall steam story, and I use the word advisedly, we have, I think, the earliest Russian engine. And of course, they can all tell the story of these engines. This one had a particularly unfortunate afternoon in it and it did go with it. And did a few times down the street and it was scrapped. And But my goodness, what an interesting exhibit. Uh, miniature steam, steam lorry coming round the ring, and again, such an important part of the whole steam story was that towards the end of the uh, steam story we had in the 1920s and 30s, some very capable machines, namely a steam roller,
yeah, richly built on the steam roller.